Good morning. Is, is this getting out? Can you hear? Thank you so much for being here. I'm John Curran, the CEO of Alamance Regional. And thank you for joining us here uh, for a great day uh, for Alamance Regional, for our community, uh, for our cancer team, and for the patients that we're privileged to serve and the community that we're privileged to care for. You know, we have a lot of great days at Alamance Regional, but our best days are the days that something really meaningful and great happens uh, to a person whose live, life we were privileged to touch. And uh, that was reminded to me in a very meaningful way two mornings ago. Uh, I was walking in from the parking lot uh, into the hospital and uh, I heard a voice from across the parking lot say, John, John, uh, wait a minute, could I have a word with you? And my first thought was, oh my goodness, what have I done this time? <laughs> but it, uh, it happened to be a friend from the community, a gentleman that I'd had the opportunity to work on some community projects with from time to time. And he said, I just wanted to tell you, today I'm having my last treatment at your cancer center. And I wanted to tell you what an awesome team you have there and what, a, what an experience, what a great experience uh, my treatment was. He said, I never thought that this would happen to me. I always thought that cancer was something that happened to other people. But then I got my diagnosis and then I got uh, to become aware of the great services uh, for people uh, dealing with cancer uh, here in Burlington. And I just wanted to tell you I'm grateful and I wanted to pass that along to you and hope that you will recognize the team that has made such a difference for me. That's a great day at Alamance Regional. And he said, you know, you've got so many talented people, so many compassionate people. When that new cancer center opens, it's going to be absolutely marvelous because you're going to have the facilities to match the people and the technology. My thoughts exactly. For 30 years, um, Alamance Regional has been fully devoted uh, to building a cancer program recognized for its ability to offer world-class care right here uh, in a community-focused setting. Our Cancer Center team has succeeded in doing just that. This Cancer Center and the campaign that we're announcing today is evidence of that commitment for the next 30 years uh, to continue to create a cancer program here that not, not only offers world-class care and the ability to heal the body, but through our efforts, uh, through our Cultivating Hope campaign. This will be a place that uh, heals the spirit. So that is why we are here today to celebrate this opportunity uh, for all of us and for our community to embrace and wrap our arms around our friends, neighbors, and family members uh, who will uh, probably undoubtedly experience cancer at some point in our lifetimes. So thank you so much for being with us uh, and for being a part of creating the capability for this kind of experience uh, for our patients and for our community. It's now a privilege for me to introduce uh, Preston Hammock, our hospital president and chief operating officer for some remarks. Preston. Good morning. Uh, thank you again for joining us on what is truly, in my opinion, a very exciting day for cancer care here in this community in Alamance County. Those of you who were with us on the groundbreaking, which I just want to point out was not that long ago, uh, heard us talk about how we feel we have an excellent clinical program in our cancer program here. We have been certified with commendation by the American College of Surgeons Compre uh, Commission on Cancer as a comprehensive community cancer program, and that's based on the excellent outcomes that we provide here. And we were excited because this building now enables us to further augment 
what we can provide and enhance those outcomes as we move into the future and how cancer care also moves into the future. So to that end, we've had our teams of clinical experts really actively working on what aspects need to be in this building and in this environment to do just that. And so we talked about how you will see elements in this new building that fall in line with that goal. There's a new linear accelerator that enables us to stay at the top of the game in terms of top shelf service in our radiation therapy program. We also are going to have additional chemotherapy treatment bays that enable a setting for community fostering so that many patients can you know, sit together and build relationships while they receive treatment, but also allows us to provide private and semi-private space for our patients and their families and caregivers if that's more appropriate for them specifically. You'll also find additional exam rooms that enable us to further continue partnering with our local tertiary and academic centers to bring highly specialized cancer care and cancer specialists here to our community where it's appropriate. And that enables us to continue to evolve and adapt to the changing needs of our patients in our community. But that group also recognized that cancer care really is evolving and changing. And elements of the support structure and survivorship play significant roles in the care of each and every one of our patients. So there's been elements in our facility here that have attempted to address that. There's a support space, there's community meeting rooms, there's additional family waiting rooms that in really attempt to try and foster that spirit of support that many of us who have had loved ones that go through a cancer diagnosis know that is truly so important. And today we are now talking about another opportunity to further enhance that. And that's when we talk about a potential healing garden that can represent the space adjacent to this fine new facility, which I've described. I think we all understand personally how some nice, well-crafted outdoor space can serve with to handle stress, to handle difficult situations, and just provide in some elements in a, a way of escape of how we can deal with the different challenging times in our own lives. It's also good to know that research studies have confirmed this, studies actually showing the fact that views of and time in outdoor settings can actually improve and have positive influences on healthcare outcomes. We also talk about the studies confirmed that it is a response, a natural response to stressful situations that enables us to move towards a naturally crafted environment to help our own, uh, our own self care as we try to deal with those situations. So I'm excited that we have the opportunity now to cultivate an area that can provide just that here on site and adjacent to our brand new facility that's gonna further the clinical care that we so long have promoted. And to me, that's a very exciting opportunity, not only now, but for our cancer care and our patients in this community well into the future. So now I'll introduce Mr. Ted Chandler and Mr. Michael Holt, who are co-chairing the Cultivating Hope Capital Campaign. Thank you, Preston. Good morning to each and every one of you. Let's talk about the weather just a, just a quick second. As Preston said, it was just a few short months ago that we broke ground on this center. And uh, some of you that were here remember that it was a little chilly. Well, today's 180 degrees and it's, it's warm. But you know what? From a man in the construction business, this is a blessed day. You know, I'm very excited to be a part uh, and in, be involved in this Cultivating Hope Capital Campaign. And I want us all to take just a minute and think, and I'm going to venture to say that everyone here and everyone in our community has been touched by cancer in some way, either themselves personally, their family, their friends, their co-workers. Just a couple of years ago, someone very close to me was diagnosed with cancer and was treated right here at our cancer center. And I'm pleased to say today they are cancer free. And I can tell you from the experience that for them and their family, the care that they received here was truly just outstanding. I want to take just a few minutes and, and tell you a couple stories or go through a couple stories which is why I'm involved in this campaign. Our first story is about a former patient 
here at the cancer center. In 2006, this individual was diagnosed with stage four cervical cancer. She had her surgery at another hospital. In 2010, she was brought to Alamance Regional for emergency care for the recurrence of her cancer. A team of cancer specialists evaluated her situation and, and prescribed a treatment protocol. She has stated many times, and I will quote, my experience at Alamance Regional's Cancer Center was a journey I will never forget. She looks at her diagnosis now, and I will quote, quote again from her, as the beginning and not the end. She will never forget Dr. Finnegan telling her, we will get through this together. You see, that is what we provide here, hope and excellent care. And today she's a mentor with our Wings to Recovery program. My next story is about a patient that went through our cancer program. Is not only a survivor, but she's much stronger today than she was before having the cancer. She was a young woman without insurance. She found a lump in her breast, and through some grant funding, she was able to be seen here at our cancer center, at the Norval Breast Cancer Care Center. In addition to no insurance, this patient also had communication and transportation barriers of getting her treatment. The Cancer Center utilized numerous funds from our charitable foundation, including the Pink Ribbon Fund, to help her with a continuity of care. While being treated for cancer, our charitable foundation funds assisted her in purchasing medication and air conditioning to ease the side effects of her treatment. This patient is a survivor, as I said, but because of the funding that we have with the Charitable Foundation and what they were able to provide, along with the love and the special care from our nurses and doctors here at the Cancer Center, she's a much stronger person today. She continues her well visits and she says she's been personally changed. She's a much more confident person today than she was when she learned of her diagnosis. These stories are why when I was asked to be involved in this campaign, I said yes, absolutely. And I feel like that this is an opportunity for us to really make a difference in our community, in our hospital, and for our patients. This hospital behind us in the new cancer center is a tremendous asset for us in Alamance County. And our new cancer center will be second to none. I know many of you have had the opportunity to tour it this morning. If you haven't, I encourage you to do that uh, after, our, after, our, uh, after we conclude. The Cultivating Hope Capital Campaign is an opportunity for our community to come together and raise funds for special amenities that contribute to a warm, healing, and progressive atmosphere at Alamance Regional's Cancer Center. Some of the funds will be used to create, as Preston said, a beautiful healing garden, which is going to be right around the corner, and many other amenities. And what we envision is a place that cultivates hope, nurtures healing for our patient, for our visitors, and for our staff. And Preston also told you there are studies that have proved this correct. You know, for a sick person, a sick patient, a stressed family member, a tired nurse or doctor, our garden will be a temporary place of peace. You know, perhaps what it will mean, if you think about it, is the difference between a bad day and a hopeful day. Now I'd like to take just a minute and introduce the leaders of our campaign. I'd like to start with our advisory committee and when I call your name if you'll just raise your hand 
John Curran, of course, Coral, <laughs> of course, Coral Erickson, Brendan Fitzpatrick, Tracy Grazer, Nancy Hemrick, F.D. Hornaday, and Cindy Johnson. Our major gifts division will be led by Lummy, Par Lummy Barnes and John Peterson. John, Lummy, thank you very much for your commitment to that. And our community gifts are going to be led by Brian Spangler and Ed Woodall. Brian, Ed, thank you so much. Again, I am very excited, very excited to be a part of this Cultivating Hope campaign. And I'd just like to close one, thank you all for being here. Also, thank you for the ones of you that have already made a commitment, and you will hear about that in just a second. And for those of you that will be making a commitment, I want to give you and say to you a sincere thank you. And now I'd like to turn it over to Michael Holt, my co-chair in this campaign. Uh, Michael? Thank you, Ted. And uh, Ted and I have been friends for a long time, and with all the rain we had this summer, it is much better to be around him today than it was earlier in the summer. <laughs> I can... My wife says that too. Um, and, and Ted is correct. We did some, find something that John could do for the committee, as you can see right now, uh, holding up the sign. Um, uh, that's my job, Michael, kind of holding things together. <laughs> but, but seriously, um, I will speak far shorter than Ted. That's the great news I can tell you. Uh, um, I will be brief. Um, but Ted, thank you for reminding me why I'm so excited to be co-chairing this campaign with you. I've been a lucky recipient of exceptional health care in Alamance County since I was born. On the third floor, of Memorial Hospital um, over across from Turntine uh, under the care of Dr. Ed Sutton. Uh, I think I saw Bob Cronodal out of the corner of my eye. There is a little health care story there. Uh, Bob, I think it was your brother John Charles that, that threw the stick that landed in my eye as we were, as, as we were building a, a tree house behind your house. Uh, it was an accident, I think, um, but that landed me for two weeks at Memorial a few years after I was born. Uh, the last thing I remember was Bob or John Charles going, wait, wait, my dad's a doctor. And uh, um, I didn't know at that time how much a bedrock in health care the Cronodal family is in this community. Um, uh, my list could go on, and I know that we all have our lists many of them that extend well beyond cancer and uh, a list to ourselves or someone we love about how health care in Alamance County has made a difference in their lives. Well now it's my chance and it's our chance to support the further development of world-class health care in Alamance County at Alamance Regional. We have a Cultivating Hope campaign that has a goal of three million dollars. Three million dollars. These funds are essential, are necessary to create the healing garden and an unparalleled cancer center environment for everyone in our community. Now, you don't think you have to show a little pass that says I have a family member with cancer to get into the healing garden. It's going to be there for everybody. While today we are announcing the launch of this campaign to you, our community, we have been busy for the last several months building support within the hospital family. For us in this campaign, that hospital family has included the Charitable Foundation Board, led by Katie Boone, thank you Katie, the Alamance Regional Advisory Board, hospital auxiliary members, hospital administrators, hospital employees, and medical staff. Our hospital family has been called on to set the pace for the campaign, to set the early pace. And let me tell you, this group has responded and is leading by example. 
I'm pleased to announce that the hospital family has made collective commitments in excess of $1 million toward fulfilling our goal of $3 million. This is a fantastic start. This, this indicator should really be a few inches above a million because it's over a million. Um, it's nice to, to say numbers that have lots of zeros and commas. Um, it will now, however, take community-wide support to push us over the top. Contributions to the campaign are tax deductible. And of course, we are prepared to accept your pledge to the campaign today. We have campaign information packets available that include both naming opportunities and some additional information on the campaign. Um, today, uh, this next phase of our campaign starts as we push over that three million number. Thanks for being a part of the kickoff celebration today and bearing the heat. I invite you to share in the mission to cultivate hope by making a financial pledge to the campaign and as importantly, well, almost as importantly, spreading the word throughout our community about our Cultivating Hope campaign. Please spread the word. Our kickoff celebration will continue with more hard hat tours. I think they are running through about 1.30 to 2 o'clock, Tracy, right? Um, and we have a floating lunch that will be in the Education Center. I think you can get there going around this side of the building. I think folks will be directing us. Uh, there's air conditioning in there. Um, uh, we're going to have a blessing before we start, but before Jackie Allen helps us with that, I think John had a couple of quick things he needed to, uh, to say. So thank you. Michael, thank you. Thank you, Michael, Ted, for, for your leadership, uh, for, and, and all of our campaign volunteers for being a part of this great undertaking. Uh, I had just a few acknowledgments that I wanted to make before we have our blessing and have our, our lunch together and further tours. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to acknowledge Preston's and my absolutely awesome senior leadership team here at Alamance Regional and for the sake of time and, and I did I was holding that up because it was blowing in the wind but actually there was some shade back there <laughs> uh, so I'm uh, fully aware that we need to get out of the sun so I'm not going to call individual names but I'm just going to ask our senior leadership team and administration to hold up your hands and be acknowledged thank you 100% participation by the senior leadership team. Yeah. Um, our key directors and project team members, our, our cancer center leadership, as well as our great uh, facilities engineering and clinical engineering teams. Please hold up your hands, be recognized. We have a, a number of colleagues uh, from the Cone Health System uh, our Greensboro colleagues that have joined us today from uh, the, the Cancer Center uh, at Moses Cone and other uh, Cone facilities, and I want to thank you very much for being here to help us celebrate today. Let's hold up your hands and be recognized. Gosh, how, we would not be here without the, uh, the dedication of our Community Advisory Board and our hospital board led by Mr. F.D. Hornaday. So, board members, please let us see where you are. Also 100% participation by those two boards. 100% participation. Our rep representatives of our Charitable Foundation Board uh, and team are here. Please let us recognize you. 100% participation. <laughs> Very nice. And then uh, I, I really want to thank our elected officials and local government officials that have uh, turned out to join us today. Tom Manning and others, please uh, let us acknowledge you. So again, thank you so much for joining us. It's a great occasion and um, bodes well uh, for the future of healthcare here in our community. 
So at this point, I'm going to ask uh, Chaplain Jackie Allen uh, to come give us a blessing. Let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. Most holy and gracious God, as we sit here in the glory of your sunshine, we're reminded of the blessing of your presence. We're reminded of our call to nurture those around us who are in need, whether their need be cancer or just having a bad day. Thank you for the opportunity to come together to create a place of healing, both a building and a beautiful garden. For in a garden, we're reminded of your creation and how your creation nurtures us and sustains us and gives us life. In the building behind us, we're reminded of the creation that is in the hands of those who have built it, whether it be a nail and a hammer or a board or concrete, each hand that brought your creative spirit to this place that has resurrected this from a void. As we walk this journey together, may we walk in your blessing. May we be ever mindful of those who are needy, of those who will be served by this place. May we keep their care foremost in our hearts. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. You're One more acknowledgement. We, we have a group of people who, at the beginning of this uh, process, said, you know, it's a real challenge to bring this building uh, out of the ground in less than a year, but we're committed to doing it, and we have enjoyed and been blessed by the work of a great building team with uh, KBR, Clark Patterson Lee, and others. So um, they reminded us that they are able to work in the rain. <laughs> Matter of fact, they're able to work night and day in the rain. Uh, to bring us to where we are today, and we're proud that this uh, this project, as well as our emergency department and operative services additions, on schedule. And actually, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be celebrating uh, seeing beginning to see patients.